In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cute little baby otter from start to finish using the iPad and Procreate. Just like all my videos, it's recorded in real time. There's no edits, there's no time lapse. So you can follow along every step of the way from the sketch process to the inks, to adding color flats, shadows, and highlights, as well as a background. So if you wanna draw along step-by-step -step with me, keep watching. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and draw a cute baby otter. Starting out, I'm using a 4,500 by 5,400 pixel canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out sketching with my 9B pencil. This is part of my pencil pack, available for Procreate right now. It's gonna allow us to kind of start out with a really light kind of sketch line and go back in and make it heavier and thicker once we start to finalize the sketch. And then finally, once again, I've got this color palette pre-made. So if you wanna download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial, you can download that for free. If you go to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, which I'll link this down in the description below too, you can find that along with a video at the top of the page, it kind of walks you through how to install a palette in Procreate if you've never done it. So let's go ahead and get started. The idea for this tutorial, I kind of want this baby otter to go along with the baby seal that I did in the last tutorial. So gonna kind of have the, the same overall feel to it, the same look. Uh, so that's what we're gonna go do today. I'm gonna have this guy kind of on his back. And I think, honestly, we'll have him at an angle. And I think it's gonna work better if we twist this. So it's gonna be landscape orientation now. So 5,400 by 4,500 here, instead of the portrait straight up, straight down. And I'm just gonna sketch in just kind of a diagonal line. This is kind of the direction I want him facing. So that's gonna kind of be the, the center line, the overall kind of flow that he's gonna have. So like I said, baby otter and the tips to make a baby design as I kind of tilt this around, I want this more to be straight on as far as drawing. Uh, but for babies or children, you kind of want all the facial features to be down towards the bottom of the chin and that jawline. And then you want the forehead to be bigger than what you would have on an adult character. So this would go for human characters and also in this case for animal characters. And I'm just gonna start with just a big oval here. This is gonna be the forehead part. So it's gonna be bigger. And then when we get down here towards the bottom, I'm gonna do another oval. And that's gonna be kind of the bottom where that, that jaw and that chin line is gonna come down into. So using basic shapes like this, using multiple shapes, overlapping them is gonna help us kind of see the design and help us get it out of our head and onto paper, or in this case, onto the tablet. So now that I have those, you can see here, I'm gonna start to kind of connect these. So as that comes down, it's gonna kind of feed into that. And I kind of want this to have like a curve as it comes back into that bottom one. So as this comes down, kind of curves there. And then the top's gonna to come back out. So you see now this forehead part right here, it's gonna be kind of almost like a two thirds or three fourths of the total head, you're gonna have either a third or a fourth of what's left down here. We'll do a chin in here connecting those. And you can kind of see how that shape is formed from those two initial shapes. From here, let's give him some hair. So I'm just gonna use, once again, basic shapes. Just using some ovals here. And then we can kind of connect these around and darken them in. Just like that, kind of giving them a a little bit more of a point there on the ends. And then knocking in some ovals here for the ears. Just like that. Darkening this up here. You see I'm just kind of building on those lines. And for the ears, I'm gonna kind of pull these out so they're gonna widen out there towards the tip and then come back in. Just like that. Draw the inside sections of that here, just like that. And that's gonna be that basic shape of the head. So now we can move on to getting the, the eyes and the nose and everything else. So like I said, facial feature is gonna be down towards here. So usually, you know, in an adult, you would have eyes up further up here, but for the 
baby, we're gonna have them positioned quite a bit lower down here. Just doing some ovals here for the eyes. A couple ovals here in the center for those pupils. Get the nose in here. Just start out with a oval and then kind of bring that down into a point, kind of like a triangle. And fill that in. And get the mouth in here, so just some angled lines here starting out, bringing those back down and curving and then back up there where they meet the, the nose. A little chin down here. Maybe across the nose here, just a couple of squiggle lines there, show that bridge. Then of course, gonna get those whiskers there. Couple eyebrows to kind of finish it off. And that's pretty good for the head. So pulling back here now, we can start on the body. So another thing with children's designs or baby designs is you want the head to almost be kind of like a bobble head and you want it to be considerably larger than the body. So when we start the shapes for the body down here, they're gonna be fairly small compared to the head. Like I said, same technique here, two ovals, and then we can start to kind of pull out lines around there, following the shape of those and connecting them so we have the body shape. We can do the same technique here for the tail. So if we do an oval here and maybe have a bigger oval here to where it's gonna kind of get wider there at the bottom, connect these just like that. And then for the center of the body here, we're gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see better. I think I'm gonna have him holding like a shell. So we'll get the shell in here first, just an oval to kind of block out where that's gonna be. Then we can kind of start to draw the parts of the shell coming around here. Just like that, and then that bottom part. So that's gonna help us kind of block in now where the arms or hands are gonna go. Bring those in here. A little couple of lines just for the paws or the fingers there. And the bottom ones here. And bringing those around with the lines. Now this is really messy, you'll know. You've watched my previous videos I like to keep the sketch process really loose really messy it's the inks where we go in and really fine-tune stuff so if you look at this right now and think okay that looks kind of rough around the edges it's supposed to I don't take a ton of time fine-tuning the sketch that's what the inks process is for and honestly that's what we're ready to move on to now because we're done with the sketch so to begin the inks the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to my layers menu I'm gonna make a new layer. It's gonna be my inks layer. And then on the layer one here, I'm gonna tap the end to bring up the blend mode. I'm gonna drag down the opacity down to about yeah, 20, 25%. We just don't wanna see it be too dark. We wanna see it, but not too much. And you can see here, this is also why that I use that pencil that I started out with because those initial shapes that I started with, once we started dropping that opacity, you can't even see it. We're just left with that heavier part that I went back in with that 9B pencil. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and start inking. We're gonna do that on layer two. And for my brush, I'm gonna switch over to my cartooning set here. And I'm gonna use my standard anchor streamline. This one, it's got a lot of pressure sensitivity built into it and get some nice line weights to it and tapers as well. And speaking of line weights, I've talked about this a lot in previous videos. I do like to use different line weights in my designs. Uh, basically heavier, thicker lines are going to be further away from the light source. It's gonna be where the shadows are. As you move closer to the light source, you're gonna have thinner lines. That's where the highlights are. Now, I say thicker and thinner lines, and you just have to understand that it's not a massive, massive difference. So sometimes online, I see people using line weights and they'll have you know thick lines like this for the shadow parts, and then they've got lines like this for the thinner ones closer to the light source. 
That's a huge drastic difference. We want a subtle difference. So I can show you here the difference between that and the way I do it. So here we'll have the light source coming in from this direction. So that means down around here, this is gonna be where the highlights are. Back here, this is gonna be the shadowed areas further away from that light source. So now that we've got that decided, I'm gonna go ahead, number one, just kind of move him a little bit with the arrow here. I'm just gonna reposition just a tad bit here, get him lined up a little bit better. Then I'm ready to start inking. So I'm gonna start then on the back side here with the thicker line further away from the light source. And I'll start up here kind of at the top. So heavier line here as I come down and around. And then we'll have a thinner line here. But like I said, not a massive difference. Move that again here. It's thinner, but it's not, like I said, that huge difference that I illustrated over here. I'm gonna use the eraser and erase here just so I can get the chin in. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can kind of see a little bit better. I'm gonna come in heavier over here and then let up my stroke at the end. So I've got a taper there on the end of that line. You can see I want it to kind of match up over here though. So we'll try that again. So I've got a taper there at the end of that line. Go ahead and get the nose in here. Connect that down here at the bottom, drag and drop in the color there. Then using the standard anchor streamline eraser, I'm just gonna add just kind of a tapered line here for the highlight there coming across the nose. Get these little squiggles here across the bridge of the nose. These inside lines are gonna be thinner than the outside lines. I like to save the heavier lines for the outline, even if it is the lighter line weight over there. You'll see these are still quite a bit thinner than the outside ones. And now for the eyes. Now I know a lot of people have problems matching up eyes from left to right. Keep in mind here, if you're doing a human, the left and right eye aren't always gonna be just a mere copy of each other. So it's okay for them to look a little bit different. Uh, in the case of animals, you can get away uh, with kind of mirroring the, the eyes. And that's what we'll do in this one. So to begin this, I'm gonna come back up to my layers menu and I'm gonna make a new layer here. This is gonna be for my eye. The way I like to do eyes is usually having kind of a thinner line weight at the bottom. And as you come up and around, it gets thicker here towards the top. That's where the heavier lashes are. That's where the eyelid is. And instead of having to draw all that, having that heavier line weight at the top kind of does that heavy lifting. So we're gonna do that now. Just like I said, a light press down here for a lighter line weight heavier as we come up and around, and then lighter as we get back down to the bottom again. And you can see that's what we're left with right there. Thicker line weight up here, lighter here on the bottom. Go ahead and knock in the pupil here. Get that in there. All right, so we've got the left eye. This is where getting that line weight as it comes down and around and the way that that flows, it's a little bit difficult, especially for beginners, to kind of replicate that from one side to the other. So here, we're gonna go ahead and duplicate it. So going to layer three, I'm gonna slide this to the left, duplicate that layer. So now we've got two of that same layer. And then going to my arrow here, to bring up my transform menu, we're just gonna flip this horizontally. Now usually if we're doing a straight up and down canvas, this will flip and you won't have to do anything else. But since we're angled like this, flipping horizontally makes it look wonky. So. From here, we need to grab that green anchor point and just kind of twist. Then we can drag this around, continuing to twist until it's lined up and looks, you know, kind of natural from one side to the other. Then locking it in, that's what we're left with. We've got the left and the right eye now. From here, we can go back up to the layers menu and just pinch all three of those together. So now all of our lines are on the same layer. Then going into our brush or eraser, I can go ahead and just do some highlights over here and here inside the pupils. Now I didn't do that initially because when we flip that, if I'd done that here, those highlights would have been on the inside part of the eye here on the left hand side, which wouldn't match up with the way that we've got our light source coming in. So that's why I saved that until I actually flipped it and then merged those layers. 
So let's go ahead now and continue our inking process here at the top. Go ahead and erase these overlaps. I'm going to try to zoom in here as close as I can so you can kind of see the technique that I'm using and see the differences in line weights as I bring these around. I know I've had comments in the past on videos that people hate the zooming in thing, but at the same time, when you're just looking at the exact image the whole time from, you know, just one vantage point and not zoomed in, you're really missing some of the important stuff here. So that's why I do zoom in. Hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. And I try not to zoom, you know, zoom in and out really quick. So it isn't jarring for you, <laughs> but I'd like to give you the best possible angles to see everything. Now here, I kind of want to fold where this ear comes in. So I'm going to start out with a light pressure here and just kind of pull that around. So it's got a little bit of fold of skin right there. And then that allow us to come in and kind of finish out that ear as we pull it up and around. And you'll see here, this line, you know, kind of missed right there. So it's a little bit bigger than what I initially had. That's one thing I've talked about before. Don't worry and don't try to trace your sketches. The sketch should just kind of be a suggestion of where everything goes. You don't want it to look too mechanical. And if you're spending a lot of time really trying to, to trace every single line that you did, it's going to look mechanical. It's not going to look as natural or as organic. So I really challenge you just to use that sketch. Like I said, as a suggestion, that's also exactly why I don't spend a ton of time in the sketch stage, making sure everything is 100% just perfect because I know there's a lot of times I'm not even going to use that exact line or that exact, you know, way that that line curves or something like that in that final ink stage. So there's no reason to spend tons of time on the sketch stage. You'll see here, I need to pull back a little bit further because I need to match these up kind of from left to right to get the same curve and to make them look similar. And if I'm too close and I can't see the other one, it's gonna cause problems. This is another case here. If you wanted to, you could always pop in there and duplicate this one from the left and the right. If you wanted to save some time and make sure that they're perfect, but I kind of like having them be just a little bit different. All right, so there we go. That's good. I'm gonna zoom back in here for the eyebrows. Same thing, light press here for a taper, bringing it around heavier to the end or you can start heavier at the end and bring it around to light, whichever way you wanna go with it. I personally, I prefer going light to heavy on, on lines like this, the curve. My arm and my hand just respond to that better, but that's gonna be something you'll figure out on your own. Here, let's get a little curve around here for the chin, just like a little curved detail like that, tapered around. Then we can do the whiskers. I think the whiskers, I'm gonna do the same thing that we did with the eyes here. So I'm gonna add a new layer here. Starting thin, going thick with the whiskers. And then coming up here to the layers menu, sliding that to the left, duplicating it, grabbing the arrow again, flipping it, twisting it, and bringing it around so they match up from one side to the other. And there you go. Now I can go ahead, coming back up to the layers menu, just pinch all those together and we're back to having that one single layer for the inks. Now let's move on to the body for here. Even though we're on one layer now, I'm gonna make another one. The reason why is because when we go in here to the body, you'll see how this curves around. When I start a line that curves that much, I usually like to start it here, up at the top before that line actually starts here. So that way I've kind of got the motion down coming into that where it connects and doing a new layer here is gonna allow me to erase that overlap. I don't have to worry about hitting those lines that I've already done. So now that I've got that, like I said, starting up here, I can kind of pull in that line and it's a lot easier to start that line up there and get that kind of direction and flow that I want. Now I can erase that overlap without having to worry about hitting that stuff I've done. You'll see here, I'm not connecting these down here. I just want it to kind of taper into the tail. I don't want this to connect all the way around. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, just starting with a tapered line coming up there. Once again, this line, a little bit thinner because of that light source. 
It, it still looks, you know, thick, but it's not as thick as this one. You can tell that it is thinner as you look at it. That's why I said that it should be a subtle difference with the, the line weights. So we've got that done. You can see the difference now pulled back out. Let's go ahead and get the tail now. I'm gonna kind of do a, once again, kind of that skin flap overlap there for the tail on that side, like we do with the ears. I can pull the tail up and around. And once again, just using that as a guide, it didn't hit those exact lines that I did in the sketch, but that's okay. It's the general area where I wanted it, and I think it still looks good, so. Awesome. We're done with that now. Last thing we got to do is get in here to the center. So I'm going to start here with the paws. Get these kind of pulled up and around here. We'll go back in then after these are drawn and kind of get that shell worked in there. The lines here for toes or fingers or whatever you want to call them. Once again, just tapered lines, starting out really light pressure and getting harder as we go into there. Gives that nice taper at the end. And from here, we can kind of do the shell now. So we'll pull these lines around, keeping these fairly thin since they are in that center part. I don't want these too thick. Don't want them to stand out too much. Once again, here you can see as I'm starting to do it, I see, okay, well, I need to move this a little bit so that we can see all the changes in the curves. So I'm not going 100% with the sketch lines there. And then I'll just add maybe some little dots here just for a little bit more detail or texture. So it's not just a big open spot there. Pulling back out then, that's what we're left with. That's our finished inked version of the design. I'm gonna go ahead and combine those line layers. So they're all on one, turning off the sketch, and that's what we're left with. So our design's inked. We are now ready to move on to adding color flats. So to do color flats, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna make a new layer, and I'm gonna drag this down underneath layer two. So layer two, lines. Layer three, color flats. Color flats. So layer two here, I'm gonna tap this, I'm gonna set this as reference. So this is going to allow me to drag and drop all my colors onto layer three, using that as kind of a guide. So they're on separate layers, it makes it non-destructive and it makes adding highlights and shadows easier in the next step too. Now that that's set, we're ready to start adding color. Coming to our color palette then, I'm gonna use this first color, uh, or the second color on the first row here. That's gonna be the base color. And as I drop this, watch what pops up here. If you're new to Procreate, continue filling with recolor. So I know a lot of people starting out, they just wanna keep dragging and dropping the color in every time. But if you're filling in a lot of different areas, that little option saves a bunch of time. So if we drag that in again, I tap this, you're gonna see this little cursor appear here. Now, since it's in the center of the eye, that's where it's gonna fill in. But if we drag that up here and then continue tapping, it fills in just those areas that we tap on. Saves you from having to drag and drop every single time from that color palette, and it is a time saver for sure. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change this background color just to something bright so we can see. We still need to fill in the whites even though that looked like they were filled in. They weren't because we had that white color for our background. So I'm gonna grab the white next. We'll drag and drop that in. I'm just gonna do the kind of highlights there and the pupils by hand. Same thing here, I'm just gonna do that by hand. Sometimes if you have a really small area, it's kind of hard not to hit those lines. And then we'll get the shell here, which I'm gonna continue filling with recolor on this because since there's so many ones to fill in, it'll save some time. And there we go, we've got that filled in. Last thing, we've got those insides of the ears. So back to the color palette, this lighter tan color, we'll use that for the ears. And I think I wanna do that on the belly too. We don't have 
a shape of the belly to do that with. So if I go ahead, let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's go ahead and make a new layer here. And I'm just going to draw an oval here. Just like that. And we'll just fill this in real quick. Now we can't necessarily drag and drop right now to fill this color in just because we've got that reference turned on on the lines layer. If we did that, it's just going to fill in that entire lower half of the body. So you could always turn that off or you can just fill this in by hand. It's totally up to you which route you want to go. So now that we've got that, I'm going to use the arrow here and warp just to kind of get this a little bit closer to what I want it to look like. And then I can grab my eraser and just erase those other sections that we don't want colored in. Just pull that out. So we get the shell and then got to get these overlaps here on the feet. It is super windy out today too, so I don't know if you guys can hear that if it's picking up on the mic, but man, it is cold here and it is windy and it's coming through the walls. All right, there we go. So we've got the belly done. I think I want to do this across the face too. So if I grab the brush again here, it's going to do this across the bridge of the nose. It's like that. And then maybe coming down like this. We'll see how that looks. And I think here now, I'm going to connect all these lines. I'm going to turn off reference. Now I can just drag and drop this in. So you can see that's going to save you time there too, rather than doing it by hand like I just did the belly. Uh, if you turn that on and off, it'll save you some time just so you can drag and drop. All right, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. That's going to be our color flats. Let me turn the background color back to white now. And that's what we're left with. So we've got the lines, we've got the color flats done. Now it's time to kind of add some more dimension to this and start with those shadows and highlights. So to begin shadows and highlights, first thing we're going to do, we're going to come up to our layers menu again. I'm going to pinch those layers together. So now all of our color flats are on one layer. I'm going to make a new layer here. I'm going to tap this and I'm going to set this to clipping mask. So with clipping mask, what this does is we're going to be able to draw on this layer and it's only going to show up on areas that are colored in on layer three. So if we add color out here, nothing's going to show up. It's only going to show up inside here. So with that selected, then I'm going to come up here to my color palette. I'm going to use this dark brown. That's going to be our shadow color. Like I said, this is going to be on layer four now that we're coloring in. Remember the light source coming in from here means shadows fall here on this backside. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. Starting with my brush, I'm just going to start to block in some pretty big areas of shadow here. And you're going to see as I draw these lines, I'm kind of following that curve and the way that the lines go from that original inked portion of the tutorial. So you'll see here as I draw a line up here, it kind of follows the way that curves. These lines are going to kind of curve and follow down with the curves and the lines of the inks layer. And I do need to do that white too. I just saw that. Once I get these areas connected, then I can drag and drop this color in. And it will work just because I do have the reference turned off now on layer one. If you did not turn off the reference, you'll have to do that before you actually go in and drag and drop. Otherwise, it's going to fill in the entire head. So we'll get all these connected here. We'll drag and drop this in. If we've got everything connected, it shouldn't fill in everything. So we're missing something here. There's some area that's not connected. So I'll just go back through one more time. Making sure everything connects here. I think now we should be good. There we go. So there was one little gap there in the lines. 
and that's gonna be our shadows. Now, obviously this is way too dark. It fills in everything. That's where the blend mode comes in. So we come back up here to our layers menu, hit the end for blend mode and drop this down. You're gonna see, there we go. We can start to see things again. So I think probably on this, maybe about 20% looks pretty good there. So we can go ahead and set that. I'm gonna come back in here to the color flats layer. I wanna get that white part in there for the nose. So we'll get that in there. Back to my shadow color now and back to my shadow layer. And then from here, I'll just kind of come in and fix some stuff and add some extra shadows here. Pull those around that bridge of the nose there and the way that that goes. We'll pull this around a little bit better here so that it lines up. Looks a little bit more natural with the, the lines that we already had in there. So you got a little extra line right there too that there we go pull this down and around and back up to this side With the light source here I'm not gonna have too much of a shadow right there underneath that because it's gonna actually hit so I'm gonna pull that back just a little bit there there we go I'm also gonna have a shadow here this eye. I always like to have a shadow in between the eye and the eyebrow just to make those pop a little bit more and stand out. Gives them a little bit more depth there. We'll have a shadow there. A shadow here coming around the chin. And same thing here, just kind of that twist of the line here for the back of that body. I'm just following that line. Continue that here. I'm not going to go ahead and do the shell right now because I think we're going to do that in a different color as far as the shadow goes. Pull shadows here behind the feet. Those come up and around. So there we go. I'm going to pull a little bit of this shadow away from the arm. I don't want everything shadowed in right there. So we'll have that pulled back just a little bit. Once again, kind of following the shape of that coming around. And then same thing here for the tail. We'll just follow this around. Just like this. All right, so that looks good. Let's get the inside here, this ear. And we'll pull a little bit of shadow here on the back of these. All right, there we go. And that looks good for those. This is really heavily shadowed in here. There's just all shadow. I don't like that because you can't really tell that it's all shadow because there's nothing to compare it to. There's no two values sitting next to each other. So if we go in with the eraser now and we erase just the edge of that, you can now see that those have two different values. It is a shadow because you have those different values right there and it's now apparent. So that's one of my kind of things that I do if I get too heavily into a shadowed area, I'll just pull back a little bit like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the eyes, but like I said, here we're gonna use a different color for the shell and for the eyes being white. I wanna use blue for that. because the, the brown that we use just looks a little bit too bland and flat and gray. So if we use blue, it kind of ties into just the overall aesthetics of the design that we're going for, just that cute and just kind of fun and welcoming vibe that we got going on. We're just gonna pull these around just that top of that lid to kind of reinforce that heavier line that we've already got in there with our sketch or uh, inks. You'll see, I'll go back in and then kind of pull back out with the eraser just to get that curve exactly like I want it. 
then add in a couple of ovals there. And then we can do the same thing down here for the shell. So we'll zoom in so you can see it. And you're gonna see here, I'm just gonna kind of follow along and continue out the curve of a lot of the lines we already had in there. Let's bring those out and around. And then use the eraser just to pull back if we go a little bit too heavy with them and too far. And pull them back out then. That's what we've got there. That's what's left. So from here, the shadows are done. We've got the, the two different shadow colors used. So now we're just ready to move on to our highlights. So the highlights kind of work the same as shadows. Same technique. We're going to go up to our layers menu, new layer, tap that, clipping mask. Even though we've got two clipping masks on top of each other, they kind of daisy chain down. So they refer to whatever's at the bottom of the most southern layer, which is going to be this one here. It clips to that just works its way down. You could have 10 of these stacked on top of each other and they're all going to point down to that one as long as you don't have any other non-clipping mask layer in between. So with that done then, we're going to go up here to layer five. Color palette, we're going to go to this kind of brighter yellow color here. That'll be our highlight color. Like I said, we've got the light source coming in from here. So we're going to start to kind of pull in our highlights following, once again, the same curve as what we laid down initially with our lines. So it's gonna have that same curve there, same curve there, here around the body. Get that in there too. Do the tail here pulling up around the edges that match up to the light source here on the paws. Same thing over here and there. And then maybe a couple of oval kind of highlights here. I like to do those on the forehead sometimes. Just like that, maybe even a couple there. So now we're ready to drop the opacity of this. So if we go up to our layers menu, once again, it's N for blend mode. I'm gonna pull this off to the side so we can see better. And for blend mode and just drop this down. I think with this one, we'll probably use about, eh, about 40%. That's why I always do my shadows and highlights on two separate layers. So you have separate control over the opacity because a certain percentage on shadows might not look good on highlights. You know, it's going to be too dark and for one and too light for the other. So that's why I recommend doing shadows and highlights on two separate layers. So you can adjust the opacity separately and you're, you're not stuck using the exact same number for both. So, all right, there we go. So we've got the shadows done. We've got the highlights from here. This is usually where I like to do any kind of final touches to the base design, uh, mainly with the inks. So if we go back to black here and with my inked layer here, layer two, if you want to just add in, you know, like little fur, stuff like that coming off the, the design or, you know, those little dots there to add texture some extra little lines here around, you know, the eyes, anything like that. That's what I'll use this point of the process for is just to add in little pieces like that. Another thing here with this design, I think we'll do now that we've got the shadows done, I'm going to use that same shadow color. So if we go up here to our color palette, select that shadow color, instead of using this dark black on here, I want to make the lines that color is going to kind of make the the color palette overall a little bit more neutral it's going to make it a little bit warmer and not as harsh using that black so with brown selected with our layer two our lines we can go ahead select our lines that's going to select all that black in that layer and then if we tap it again and hit fill layer it now filled all that black in with brown and you can see it's not as dark it's not as bold and it makes it just a little bit warmer of a design. And I think it fits better with that aesthetic that we've got going with the design. So there we go. Our main design is done from here. Then I think we're ready to just throw in a background and call it a day. 
So to do the background, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu. We're gonna go ahead and make a new layer and we're gonna drag this all the way down below our color flats. Now that we've got that done, back up to our color palette. I've got this kind of seafoam green color in here. So I'm gonna select that. I'm just gonna draw with my finger just an oval here. I'm gonna continue to hold down and then hold down with my other finger to lock it into a circle. And then I'm gonna drag and drop that color into there. From here then, I'm just gonna grab the arrow just to reposition this a little bit. So if we go to uniform down here, just kind of shrink this down and just get it to wherever you think it looks good. Locking it in there. This way we'll kind of have a water design behind him. And then with our eraser here, I'm just gonna go in and just kind of race out some circles around the side so it kind of has like a bubble feel almost to it. I think that'll look kind of cool. We'll just do these kind of in different sizes so you're not doing them all the same. And just kind of haphazard around here. No real rhyme or reason to it. Just whatever you think looks good. If you watch my videos too, I don't get super heavy into backgrounds on these. I usually just, you know, like to keep it fairly simple, but throw in something that, that makes sense for the design and makes it pop. You know, just having this on a plain white background isn't gonna be super interesting to look at, but at the same time, I like to have the, the main character and design stand out, so I don't like to go in with just some crazy rendered background that takes as much time as the main character, because that's not really what these tutorials are for, and the main work that I do kind of has the same feel as uh, this, this technique and style, so. All right, so we've got that, and then maybe if we zoom in here just a little bit, let's do some, do some tapered lines here coming around so it looks like, kind of like the water ripples. He's floating in there. And with these, once again, just trying to get the, the curve of these as close as I can to the curve of that outside circle. And just the direction that that takes. And having, you know, the, the difference between the, the things kind of close pulling it down here and having these come around. Just something to add in a little bit of extra detail. Just like that, I think that looks pretty good. And then finally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that brown again. I'm gonna make a new layer and I've gotta sign this. So I gotta come down here and once again, talked about it before, I gotta remember to sign 2022. That's always the thing I have problems with. I think the first few months of the year, I'd, you know, maybe by March I might have it down, but I always write the, the previous year. So, all right, there we go. A finished design, a cute little baby otter to go along with the last tutorial of the baby seal. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for following along. If you did take part in this, if you followed with the tutorial and you post your work online, which I do urge you to do if you're on Instagram or Twitter, definitely tag me at BJ Dell. I love seeing everybody's work and seeing what you can do with these. And I look forward to checking out yours as well. So as for me, I can also be found online at bjdell.com. So that's it for today's video. And as always, keep creating. Thank you.